When speaking of her life as a writer, Margaret Walker once remarked, quote, The body of my work springs from my interest in a historical point of view that is central to the development of black people as we approach the 21st century. Born in 1915, Margaret Walker was a poet, novelist, teacher, and essayist whose career spanned five decades from the 1930s to the 1980s. Walker was the daughter of a Methodist minister who had been born in Jamaica. Walker's father was a scholar who passed on to his daughter his love of literature, the classics, the Bible, the English classics, and poetry. In a similar vein, Walker's musician mother played ragtime and read poetry to her, choosing among such varied authors and works as those by Paul Lawrence Dunbar and Shakespeare. Walker's work consistently reflects a complete historical perspective while working with themes, images, and subjects that are relevant to a changing society. Her upbringing in a southern home in Alabama really emphasized to her the rich heritage of black culture, and it contributed to her responsiveness to the black experience, which is reflected in her work. Two important writers encouraged Walker. When Walker met Langston Hughes in 1932, he told her she had to continue writing poetry. And then Walker's friendship with writer Richard Wright proved practical and beneficial to both young writers. They collaborated and they revised each other's work and discussed dialect, folk materials, spirituals, and work songs. Sadly, however, their friendship ended rather abruptly and rather painfully in 1939. Walker was accepted into the prestigious University of Iowa Writers' Workshop, where she rekindled her love of folk materials. She was already familiar with the work of Zora Neale Hurston. Her original idea for an MA thesis was a Civil War novel about her great-grandmother. Instead, she wound up publishing a collection of poetry entitled For My People, which went on to win the Yale University Younger Poets Award in 1942. In fact, For My People was the first book of poetry published by a black woman since Georgia Douglas Johnson's The Heart of a Woman and Other Poems, which had been published in 1918. Critics admired the collection, in particular the title poem, For My People. It instantly became an American classic, memorized by students over the decades since it was first published. The poem urges action, demands sweeping changes, and warns that change eventually may be wrought through violence, a quote, bloody peace. Here is a clip of Margaret Walker reading the poem. Take a listen. For my people by Margaret Walker Alexander. For my people everywhere, singing their slave songs repeatedly, their dirges and their ditties and their blues and jubilees, praying their prayers nightly to an unknown God, and bending their knees humbly to an unseen power for my people lending their strength to the years, to the now years and the gone years and the maybe years, washing, ironing, cooking, scrubbing, sewing, mending, hoeing, digging, planting, pruning, patching, dragging along, never gaining, never knowing, never reaping, and never understanding. For my playmates in the clay and dust and sand of Alabama black yards, playing, 
preaching and doctor and jail and soldier and school and mama and cooking and playhouse and concert and store and Miss Tumby and hair and company. For the cramped, bewildered years, we went to school to learn to know the reasons why and the answers to and the people who, and the places where, and the days when. In memory of the bitter hours, when we discovered we were black, and poor, and small, and different, and nobody cared, and nobody understood. But the boys and girls who grew in in spite of these things to be man and woman, to laugh <laughs> and dance and sing and play and drink their wine and religion and success, to marry their playmates and bear children and then die of <laughs> consumption and anemia and lynching for my people. Thronging 47th Street in Chicago or Lenox Avenue in New York or Rampart Street in New Orleans lost, disinherited, dispossessed and happy people filling the cabarets and taverns and other people's pockets needing bread and shoes and milk and land and money and something, something all our own. For my people walking blindly, spreading joy, losing time being lazy, sleeping when hungry and shouting and shouting when burdened, drinking when hopeless tied, tangled and shackled among ourselves by the unseen creatures who tower over us omnisciently and laugh. For my people blundering and groping and floundering in the dark of churches and schools and clubs and societies, associations and councils and committees and conventions distressed and disturbed and deceived and devoured by money hungry glory craving leeches preyed on by facile force of state and fad and novelty by false prophet and holy believer for my people standing trying to fashion a better world from confusion, from hypocrisy and misunderstanding, trying to fashion a world that will hold all the people, all the faces, all the Adams and Eves and their countless generations. Let a new earth rise. Let another world be born. Let a bloody peace be written in the sky. Let a second generation fill of, full of courage issue forth. Let a people loving freedom come to growth. Let a beauty full of healing and strength of final Clinton be the pulsing in our spirits and our blood. Let the martial songs be written. Let the dirges disappear. Let a new race of men now rise and take control.